Hello, everyone. Welcome to my talk today about uh, Dragon. I am Michal Koutny, and I'm from Kernel Core team. So what is Dragon? Uh, this is an uh, extract from the readme file, which says that uh, Dragon is a debugger with an emphasis on programmability. And Dragon was developed at Meta for debugging the Linux kernel as an alternative to the crash utility. So uh, it uh, got my curiosity uh, because it uh, was often shown that it can debug also the running kernel. And I was wondering whether the tool could be used also for ordinary crash dumps uh, that we have and how smooth such a setup would be in comparison with uh, the traditional crash utility from the user convenience perspective. So uh, in this talk, uh, I will go through some points how to get the program, how to set up a core dump to open it, a uh, little overview of the design of uh, this uh, uh, of the program, uh, then I would compare it on some reference uh, debug session. I would mention uh, Dragon scripts, and at the end there will be some comments of mine about it. So uh, how to get it? This is uh, targeted mainly for the OpenSUSE Tumbleweed uh, distribution, and uh, the three options here are sorted uh, yeah, in my subjective preferences. So. I think the first option is the best one if you install it from the distribution packages. Uh, so it's, it's installed system-wide and uh, it's, you don't have to take care about anything and you have it. There is a slight drawback that it can be lagging behind uh, the current upstream version uh, when it's not uh, released. Uh, so then the second option is to clone the sources and uh, build it locally as a Python module. Then you have the, the latest, bestest version. Uh, and the last option, uh, which I would rather discourage, uh, is to use the pip3 uh, install. Uh, and uh, it could work as well, because it's also a sim it carries all the dependencies that it needs. But uh, I'm not sure how well the repositories of the pip uh, are, how well they are scrutinized. So uh, I'm mentioning here it just for uh, completeness. So we have uh, the program in, uh, installed and uh, how we open uh, core dump, kernel core dump. So we need a debug info for it. Uh, I'm now discussing uh, uh, SUSE kernels for SLES, from SLES or from the OpenSUSE. They are built without the debug info or it's separate, so you need the extra package for it. So you install it uh, for the respective uh, dump version, uh, version of the dumped kernel. And uh, then uh, you run the command, the dragon, uh, with the path to the core file and the path to the uh, main, uh, uh, main image uh, debug infos. Uh, in theory, uh, it could uh, look it up automatically, but uh, as was already pointed out previously with the BCC tools, uh, the paths uh, in our distribution and uh, in uh, Dragon are slightly different, so you have, you, have to, you have to pass the argument explicitly. So when you do this and it starts, so you get a, a Python-like uh, environment uh, where in the beginning you see what is imported into the environment. Uh, we have, uh, we have already some Python symbols uh, defined, and uh, you, then it behaves like normal Python. So you can you can uh, evaluate the expressions uh, uh, related to the crash dump. More about that later. So uh, how it's uh, designed or how it's uh, um, constructed. So we saw that we have the Dragon program, which is actually a Python script. Uh, uh, there is the Less of the code is in the Python, most of the code uh, is uh, written in C, and it is compiled into a shared uh, library that has interface of a, a Python module. So the Python program imports uh, this library as a Python module, and you, uh, you, you get the functions you need. Uh, and uh, this library itself uh, uh, utilizes uh, elf utils. Uh, uh, it uses libdwarf and libelf to uh, parse the elf files and the debugging for files, and uh, 
and uses a libkdump file to read uh, kdump formatted dumps. So this is the structure of the program and uh, uh, structure of the data that, is, that are processed. So uh, there are two artifacts uh, on the left side that we need. Is the core dump file. Uh, it can have uh, it can have various formats uh, like the elf format uh, and its flavors or the kdump format. Uh, so then it's parsed uh, by one of the libraries, and then you have the debug debug symbols uh, that are parsed uh, with the elf utils libraries. So then. This is transformed into the C structures, which are just like some pointers to data. Then it's wrapped to uh, structures for the Python API, the Py object, and eventually you get it uh, available inside the Python environment as a classes for uh, arbitrary memory objects and uh, for the debugging for the dragon type. And often you work with uh, generator sequences uh, presented by iterator and some few other classes. So this is uh, how the data data pass through. So n now the thing about the runtime debugging that I said uh, was so appealing to me. So I knew that there is the slash dev slash mem device that gives you a, uh, uh, basically like mirror of the physical memory so you can read the data on the running kernel. Uh, but I knew that even crash utility can access this file and uh, provide you some insights into the running system, but uh, it was not as um, as exhaustive as uh, analysis of uh, full crash dump. Uh, so then I've learned about this uh, slash proc slash keycore file, which if you uh, uh, check it with the file utility, you realize it's an elf file. So it looks like it could be the real dump uh, with all the data you need. Uh, so I had high hopes. Even when I checked how it is implemented internally, uh, this virtual file, uh, there is uh, explicitly added a uh, note with the register states, which, what would, which is what would be missing with the uh, physical memory image. Uh, so I was, mm, uh, I was excited, uh, but actually in the code, uh, if you check it, it's only initialized with zeros, and it's, uh, it's uh, not uh, set because it would be difficult, like what should be there at the runtime. So uh, it is uh, just a dummy, uh, dummy section in the file. So uh, effectively, the information you can get or with Dragon on the running uh, system is same like the information you can get with Crash on the running system. Uh, but yeah, it's a different uh, experience. So uh, now uh, is uh, the example of how I would use it for some debugging session uh, and a short survey into the audience. So uh, I know people may use multiple tools uh, for different course. So the question is now, who uses the crash utility here in the audience? Okay, okay so I see like uh, half the people or maybe more than half. Uh, so who uses uh, Dragon utility? Okay, so that's like a little number, but there exist some persons. And who uses Crash Python? Yes, so it's about, about the double the number of uh, the Dragon guys, but the Crash is still the winner, I would say. Um, okay, so uh, uh, of course it depends on the particular case, but there here is like some generic recipe that I do when I get a core dump uh, to check it quickly. Uh, so at first, I'm interested in what's going on on the CPUs. Uh, secondly, uh, I would like to see what, uh, are, what are the other tasks that are not currently active, uh, what were they doing uh, or why they are not active. Uh, then uh, filter those somehow for the candidates that could be causing the problems and eventually uh, uh, walk through the data and uh, get more information. So in crash, I do it uh, like this. Uh, we have the command uh, backtrace uh, bt minus a, which uh, shows us uh, the tra stack traces of uh, uh, tasks on the, car uh, on the CPUs. Uh, so here, this is example from just a dummy uh, virtual machine uh, that I have dumped uh, uh, manually. 
So you see on the CPU zero, there is the uh, handler for the um, for the manual the trigger of the crash. Uh, interesting is the CPU one, which was idling, but you can see that the crash shows us also the exception stack when it got the NMI during the panic. So, so this is um, this is what we see on the CPUs. So yeah, here as, as I said, this is just an example. Uh, crash jump, there is no bug, but uh, this is what was going on on the system. Then if I want to see uh, of what the tasks that are not on the CPU were doing, so there is again a short uh, construction for each BT, for each backtrace, so it will dump uh, backtraces of all the tasks. Uh, here just a uh, uh, short snippet. We will see that, uh, or we see that um, yeah, they will be mostly in schedule, but uh, when they call the schedule, that's the interesting stuff. Another step was uh, somehow um, figuring out which tasks uh, might be more interesting to us. So uh, my favorite uh, command is uh, uh, PS minus M, which uh, tells us, uh, oh, which shows us the time since the tasks last got the CPU. Um, we can uh, sort, uh, it's sorted, and we might be interested only in a subset of the tasks. So uh, again, this is another crash, uh, crash signature uh, feature uh, that you can, pipe uh, the outputs of internal commands into the external programs. So here uh, it is just looking at the tasks that uh, were the longest uh, um, longest out of the CPU. Uh, so here this is n nothing suspicious on this system, uh, but it's just the end of uh, the end of the list. And uh, Fourth step is looking at the data. So uh, again, very versatile command is the P or print, where you can pass an C-like expression, which is evaluated by GDB, I think. So here you can see you can get arbitrary number, cast it to a pointer, and uh, then chase the member members. And uh, also, uh, top completion works nicely when you when the types are defined. So this is how it's done with Crash, this reference session. Uh, how is the same thing done with Dragon? So at the top, you have a Python snippet. Uh, so you see, uh, we need to get the list of the CPUs. Uh, and for each CPU, uh, we uh, figure out the current task on it. And then we have a uh, hand, uh, hand, handy function uh, that uh, dumps the stack for us. So we see that the output is similar uh, to the previous example. Uh, is the same uh, same crash jump, uh, but uh, notice that on the second CPU uh, that uh, was idling, so we only see the idling stack. We don't see uh, the exception stack uh, that uh, that happened during the panic. Uh, for the offline, uh, sorry, offline uh, off CPU tasks, uh, again we have a helper helper function for each task uh, that returns. Uh, uh, iterator of all tasks and uh, the rest of the construction is the same. Uh, we get the stack trace. Now, uh, the construction for uh, at the equivalent command to the PS minus M uh, is uh, this Python expression. Uh, which, uh, there are perhaps multiple ways how you can write it. Uh, I used some of these functional uh, functional wrappers. So. Internally, you see uh, there I sorted by some expression calculated from the tasks uh, getting for last arrival and uh, run queue clock uh, value. Uh, then I filter it, uh, sort it, uh, crop it, and uh, just print it uh, so that I see at least the command name. I, I could see whatever I wanted. So for this, uh, for this demo, uh, it's the command name. Uh, the, the, yeah, so it's a similar output like previously. And uh, uh, the equivalent of the print command is, uh, again, we can construct the dragon object uh, for just from the number that we cast to pointer. And uh, then we can, again, chase the members. And top completion works actually quite uh, similarly to crash. And we get pretty printed uh, output of the, of the expression. So this was like a comparison of uh, the two uh, sessions. And maybe you are asking, uh, what did I just show? Uh, the, or at least in my, uh, in my impression, the crash session was much uh, simpler. And uh, it was much less typing. I didn't have to edit uh, Python code in the REPL interface. 
Uh, I didn't have to take care of uh, the output formatting. And also, I didn't have to know the internals of the particle kernel implementation uh, to get the information. So, uh, this is how I was not impressed by Dragon, but there is an alternative built on top of Dragon, uh, and it's called Crush. Uh, uh, and it's uh, purely uh, in Python, so it's a Python module, so the equivalent commands when you run crash on your crash core dump, uh, you, you can similarly invoke the module and it will start, start a crash-like environment. Uh, and you can see here is the uh, initial prompt. Uh, it looks almost the same, although you may notice, for example, the number of tasks is different. Um, this is by, because of the interpretation of the idle tasks. And I don't know why the memory show why the memory shows a different value, but perhaps yeah, there are some bugs on the crush side. Uh, yeah, maybe we will have crush in the future. Uh, so uh, here, just uh, uh, briefly, how the crush would compare with the crash uh, reference uh, session. So the, the, they are not the same commands, uh, but you can use. Uh, uh, very similar commands, and uh, you can also the the piping to the commands works as well. Here we are piping like internal commands to internal commands, but it can be piped also to external programs. Uh, on, uh, unfortunately, when I tried the crush uh, crush uh, Python uh, thing, uh, so it uh, didn't work completely. Somehow, when there were user space tasks inside the set of the tasks, I wanted to. Uh, make trace, so uh, it uh, ended up with error. So it's it's not uh, production ready yet, but it's I think interesting project, uh, and uh, it does, doesn't have the print command, but it has the good old struct command that we know from Crash. That works equally. So yeah, that was uh, my comparison of the debugging sessions. Now. Uh, I think the Dragon itself is more focused on uh, analyzing the running kernel and more in the scripted fashion, uh, not in the directly interactively. So uh, there are Dragon scripts uh, for this purpose, uh, there, and there are two, two collections of them, or two public collections of them that I know about. Uh, one is the contrib directory in the Dragon repository. Here I here I mention a few of the few of the important scripts. Why they are important? Uh, because they were contributed uh, by our colleague uh, Martin Lischka when he was working in the toolchain team. Uh, so these uh, uh, these helper scripts are supposed to provide similar information uh, like uh, respective uh, crash commands. Uh, although uh, when I was trying them, I already ran into the issue. Uh, that either uh, they were only in the in the repository version uh, because uh, they were not yet released, or uh, which uh, that this can happen also to crash. Uh, for example, the VM map command did not support the Maple Tree VMA uh, linking yet. Uh, so uh, these are some contribution uh, scripts. Uh, there is another uh, silo of uh, this script, but it's smaller. Uh, it's in the actual Linux kernel tree uh, in the tools directory. One of the interesting ones is uh, the C group memcg slap info script uh, that was conceived uh, as a re replacement for the uh, C group changed interface. Because in C group v1, you could uh, print uh, slap infos uh, um, slap info statistics uh, for each C group, uh, but that does not exist in C group v2, and also it was related to because, yeah, it was related to some changes in the implementation. Basically, so you can get uh, same output like that existed in the uh, in in the C group file system, uh, but you get it like dynamically through the um, Dragon script. Uh, what is interesting that that. Uh, it takes uh, longer than than the uh, than the kernel implementation, uh, but uh, yeah, it's not very efficient. Uh, this, that script uh, uh, it 
it doesn't make it justice uh, uh, these times, but what I want to, to say here that uh, that's an advantage of uh, Dragon scripts in comparison with Crash, uh, that Crash uh, parses and interprets uh, all the kernel data structures at the beginning, so sometimes you know it takes a long time to start it up, uh, but with uh, Dragon, uh, it uh, only parses the headers and on, then lazily lazily interprets the data. So you can write such uh, quick scripts that can be started multiple times eff effectively. So here is a little table uh, where I try to somehow personally uh, evaluate uh, the individual um, utilities for in the terms of uh, how easy it is to install them how easy it is to set up it for a given core dump. Uh, there are like two columns. Uh, uh, first is like core dump from the SLES kernel, and the second is from the Tumbleweed kernel or some uh, self-built kernel. Uh, then how it the, second, the third column is how well it supports various formats of the kernel dumps. Uh, uh, fourth column is how it shows the stacks uh, actually uh, I showed that um, I would show that the crash can show also, also or can display the exception stacks, uh, which is useful in some situations. On the other hand, um, parsing, uh, for example, the local variables or arguments in crash is uh, not so nice. So uh, I, I didn't give it full score. Uh, and uh, the architect architecture supports. Uh, here I put it in parentheses, the other utilities, because I could not test it. Uh, they, the, first, there is a thing uh, with crash, you need to run crash uh, on, the, on the given architecture. You cannot cross dump or cross analyze. Um, and the other utilities, in theory, can do it, uh, but it also depends whether it's implemented. So that's, uh, uh, that depends uh, how, how well it's implemented and uh, yeah, uh, confession uh, confession um, yes yeah, I said dragon is a new thing to me so uh, when I was analyzing or when I'm analyzing the crash dump I crash dumps I use combination of uh, crash and crash Python but maybe I should change it uh, which is actually here some call to actions or calls to actions for each of us. Uh, so maybe uh, next time when you have a core dump to analyze, uh, try crash uh, instead of the traditional crash and try uh, how it works, whether you can get the information. Perhaps try it in the case when you have enough time to play with that when it's not a critical bug. Um, there can be even expanded uh, that sometimes we write bugs like comments when we interleave uh, crash session inputs, a crash session outputs, and our comments to it. So maybe there were some attempts to combine the Dragon Python interface with Jupyter Notebooks, where you can do similar thing, and it can even run interactively if you provide the backing data. Uh, other thing uh, what we can do is to improve the libkdump file, because uh, it's not used only by Dragon, but also by the crash Python, and uh, if, if, we, if we add support, for example, or if we improve support, for example, to opening uh, Quemu Elf dumps, uh, it would benefit all of these tools. Uh, uh, because I, in the previous table, I put a high score for the crash utility, because crash utility has some quite neat tricks how to open various incomplete or somehow yeah, incomplete or obfuscated core dumps. So it's, yeah, the crash is uh, very, uh, very good at this. Uh, so it would be good to have libkdump file as good as uh, the crash for opening this. Uh, another option, another idea is uh, maybe to have some container image for the dumping so it's easy to set it up and uh, you don't have to go to a, some community server, which we have, which I called community server, which is Alfred Mu, when the tools should work, but also uh, because it's a silly, so we cannot get the oldest version from the repositories there. So uh, maybe the container could uh, uh, compensate for that. Another idea is uh, it's complementary to the BPF tracing that we had uh, in the previous talk. Uh, that maybe we can provide the customers uh, with some Dragon scripts to extract data from their systems. Although it's a slightly different kind of extraction, 
with the BPF, I would call it like a differential view uh, with uh, Dragon is like integral view uh, where you only see the data that are already accumulated somehow in the kernel. You cannot uh, hook it into the events like with BPF trace, but uh, then it's less intrusive on the other hand, so and pr can provide useful information. And uh, like more immediate actions are, you can share your experience uh, how, how convenient do you find the interfaces of the individual tools or if you have a question right now, uh, you can ask. Okay, there is a question. Uh, you, you say share your experience. Uh, do you have like a place in mind? Like right, right now, tell it. Tell whether you the first the tool of choice. What I mean, like okay, uh, I did not did not mind. Okay, if you want to share it, so uh, like later asynchronously. Uh, so. For example, on the research mailing list or kernel mailing list, um, something like that. Uh, or I thought, like some short, uh, short remarks if you have right now. Oh no, I don't. So okay, so later. I I I I, um, I will have a newbie experience once I started using it. A newbie experience that I think also useful. Just for your awareness, we have one community feature request to actually do automatic reporting of issues from the host. And when I, when I see your idea of having a community server for this, this can extract some useful information for debugging. I can see that maybe, maybe you could also respond to the Jira and provide some details if there is a, you know, some space for this tool to be part of this potential workflow. Yeah, that's, yeah, maybe it's a different kind of community that I have had in mind about. Sure, sure, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, okay, okay. Uh, I think uh, versus BPF trace, maybe one problem with Dragon on live systems that you could, uh, the since there's no really locking, so maybe the data structure you dump is kind of like uh, work in progress, so it's not the yes. integrity. Uh, yeah, it's like if you take photo with long exposition, it's uh, blurry. Okay, so uh, yeah, perhaps no more questions, or if there is a question later, it can be. Uh, so I have here some extra thanks. Uh, to uh, Petr Tesařík, who maintains the Dragon in OpenSUSE, to Martin Liška, who I mentioned did some uh, contributions to the Dragon upstream, and also to the Dragon community, which is not so big, but it's, uh, it's uh, growing, I think. And here are the links. So th this, is all, this is all from my presentation, and no more questions, perhaps? Okay, 